Sometimes we hear stories about people who were born in very poor, humble conditions who rose to enormous levels of wealth and power. There's a story of the emperor, Justin I of Rome, who was born into a family of pig farmers. And in a single lifetime, he went from the very lowest place in society to the supreme ruler of the most powerful empire the world has ever seen. There was also a pope who was born into a family of poor carpenters, and he became head of the entire church. And here in, in America, we have an enormous number of, of similar examples of people who were born into very ordinary circumstances and who became billionaires and leaders of, of politics and, and finance and technology. And whenever we hear stories like that, we always wonder, how did they do that? And how can I do something like that? Because I wish that that would happen to me too. And we should be thinking something similar today when we see, when we're thinking about all the saints in heaven, all the people who have saved their souls, who are exactly where we want to be, more than anything else in the whole world. We have to think about how they got to where they are now. When we think about the saints, sometimes we don't think of them the way we think about other people on earth, we tend to think of them as being superhuman. And in a way, they are, but in a way, they're not. They were human beings, just like we are, not just the canonized saints, but even just the people from the ordinary walks of life, like us. Just like us, they were born in sin, they had temptations, just like we do, uh, they had a fallen nature and concupiscence, and they had joys and sorrows like we do. They wondered about their salvation sometimes, just like us. And they were certainly uh, afraid of being lost, like, like we are sometimes, or we should be. And yet they ended up eventually in the realms of eternal joy. So how did they manage this? Well, the answer is very simple that they had a complete resolve to live according to the principles of the faith and to carry them out in their lives. So we should think today, what were the principles that these people lived by that brought them to where they are now and where we want to go? Imagine if we could have some anonymous saint come down from heaven today and talk to us, just one of the random people in this enormous multitude that St. John saw in his vision in the uh, epistle today. If we could have one of these people come down from heaven and and, and talk to us. Imagine we could could, uh, interview someone like that, just like you read reporters interviewing the great rich people in the world and asking them how they became so great and powerful because everybody wants to know these people's secret. First of all, we would ask this person what it was that he was thinking about during his life that brought him to such a level of holiness. He would probably tell us that he was constantly aware of the fact that he he was serving God. He was serving a God of infinite perfection who deserves the complete homage of his being. No human being can give God the homage that he deserves because He deserves an infinitely perfect worship. But we still have to give him the greatest love and humility and adoration that we possibly can. And it was by striving to give God a worship that would be fitting for him that this saint became a holy person. Imagine we ask this person next, what was it that made you so holy? He would probably say that it was the thought that God sees me. He was constantly living in the presence of God, remembering that God saw every thought that he thought, every word that he said, and every action of his day. God said to Abraham, walk before me and be perfect. There is a cause and effect relationship between those two things. If we walk in the presence of God all the time, we will be perfect. 
And the more we do it, the closer we will come to, to being perfect. We should try and experiment today, in fact. Let us try to remind ourselves 10 or 20 times throughout the day today, let's say at the beginning of every hour or at the beginning of each task that we do, to remind ourselves that God sees us. If we do this, we will see the grace of the Holy Ghost working in us and causing us to live in a closer union with God. Next, let us ask this person what it was that made him so humble and earnest in the service of God. And the answer that he would give would be, it was the thought that everything that he did was for God. If we think that everything that we do throughout the day is being done for God, we, in the same way, will do all of our duties with great zeal and care. We see people do something similar in the world. When someone works for some, some great and powerful person, and he depends on this person for all of his, his material well-being, all of his happiness in life, he does everything that he can to please that person as much as he can. Because that, that, that person that he works for holds his fate in his hands. So he does his work as perfectly as possible. And if we have the same attitude towards God, if we, if we serve God as well as we can, because he really holds our fate in his hands, we will live according to God's will as well. If we ask this saint again to tell us more about what made him so holy, he would say that it was the thought that either he had to be holy and go to heaven or he would be sent to hell. Either he had to spend his life in sanctifying grace to save his soul or if he fell into sin, he would be miserable forever. He had to remember, as St. Bernard says, not to go forward in the way of perfection is to go backwards. We're always swimming upstream like a salmon. If we don't keep swimming, if we don't keep pushing ourselves forward, the current will carry us back like a dead fish. This person that was saved had to remember that if he didn't become completely holy in this life, even if he died in sanctifying grace and was saved, he would still have to be purified in the fires of purgatory. And he always bore in mind that it's better to work for our salvation here, to offer up our sufferings in penance for our sins, and to do the duties of our state in life, which is also meritorious and takes away our temporal punishment. All these things are much better than to endure the fires and the torments of purgatory. We also have to remember that if we don't reach the level of holiness that God has destined for us in this world and has called us to, that we run the risk of being lost completely. It might be that we have to reach a high place in heaven or we might not make it at all. Think about the example of Judas. He was destined for a very high place in heaven with the apostles. And since he didn't make that, he didn't end up mediocre and just squeaking into heaven. He, he went to a very deep place in hell, most likely. Another piece of advice that this person in heaven would give us is that we need to make use of every single grace that we get. Because if we waste one grace, that might be the one grace that would get us to heaven. We see in the lives of the saints, in many cases, it was one grace, it was one life-changing event that brought them to sanctity. St. Anthony of the desert was living an ordinary life in the world, and one day he went to Mass and he heard a sermon that told him to sell all that he had and give it to the poor and then serve God. And he did exactly that. He sold all his possessions, and he went to the desert, and he lived as a hermit. And he became not only a saint himself, he became a great leader and a teacher of many other people that he brought to sanctity, many other hermits. 
And if he had wasted that, that tiny little grace that he got to go and attend Mass on that one day, he most likely would not have sold all of his goods and become a hermit. And maybe living in the world, he might have lost his soul. So rather than take that chance, we should correspond as faithfully as possible with every grace that we receive. Let us ask this saint again, what made him so holy and what helped him save his soul? And he'll tell us that it was the thought that the harder he worked at his salvation, the easier it would become. The greater merit he would achieve, the more he would be freed from his bad habits the more certain his salvation would become. And the same will be true for us. The more we develop good habits, just like with any other habit, the easier it will become for us to practice virtue and earn merit for heaven. This person in heaven thought about the fact that he only had one life in which he could save his soul, and if he, if he didn't make it to heaven in that life that he had, He would not get another chance. Imagine if one day we could see all the graces that we had lost on the previous day through our our sins and our neglect and our lukewarmness. And how that would inspire us to spend the next day as fervently as possible. But of course this is real. Just because we don't see these things doesn't make them any less real. We have to think We have to think every day about our last end. And when our time comes to die, how will we want to have spent our life? We will want to have spent it living the life of a saint. But by the time we get there, it'll be too late to come back and change anything the way we're living now. But but it's not too late now. If we say our prayers well in this life, and if we fervently ask God, to purify us of our faults, if we mortify our inclinations and offer up the sufferings of this life in penance for our sins, then when we die, we will be a saint too. Our judgment will not be a terrifying event, but instead we'll hear the invitation of our Lord telling us to enter into his kingdom. And if this saint from heaven had any regret at all about the way that he lived his life, the only thing he would regret would be that he wasn't more detached from the world, more fervent in his prayers, and more mortified against his passions. But we should have confidence, because all of these things that we have to do are, of course, not within the power of human nature by itself, but they are very easily in the power of God's grace. And if we ask for God's grace to live the life of a saint in this world, he will certainly give it to us and will be a saint in the next. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.